to touch on the various different reports that you can export from SoStock and show you some samples of these. So we're going to start at the inventory page here. And there are a couple of different reports you can export from the inventory page. First of all, you want to look at your dashboard. We're not going to get into dashboards uh, in this video, but you can check out the dashboards section because each of these reports is going to be different depending on which dashboard you're using. All right, so we're just going to do the active products report and I'm going to show you the different types of exports that you can do. But of course, the data that shows up will vary based on the dashboard settings, which allow you to hide columns, filter, group, and those sorts of things. So you would come up to this export to Excel and whatever you see, whenever you see this cloud symbol, you are going to know that you can export using this button. Now there are a couple of different ways to export your current view. There's the expanded view, and then there's the collapsed view. I'm gonna show you a report of each. So you just click the download button, and then let me pull up what the expanded view looks like. All right, so here's the expanded view. You'll notice that each of the marketplaces is separated out. That's what the expanded view is. It doesn't collapse everything together. It separates each product on a line by itself in the expanded view. So that means that you are able to get the total FBA count, the total stock for each individual marketplace. Whereas the collapsed view, as I'll show you, actually combines them. So all of your information is available per marketplace. All right, and now let's look at the collapsed view. So the collapsed view, as I mentioned, has the marketplaces combined. So you can see here that all the data is on a single line rather than on the expanded view where it is on a line by itself. The expanded view is helpful when you would like to grab numbers and simply copy them and not have to filter anything out. All right, then there's the inventory snapshot. I'm not gonna show you a, a, an example of this I'm simply going to let you know that it exists. And what the inventory snapshot is, that basically you can pull date-based reports. So if you wanted to pull a report for month end, for example, you could pull that and you could see what the inventory was at month end. This is very helpful for people such as your accountant who often needs to know what the inventory count was at the end of every month. All right, let's go into the forecast section. The forecast section also has reports. You see this button here. It'll give us a consolidated forecast report with profits. And I'll show you what that looks like here. So we've got our forecast with profits. It's gonna show every product. It's going to show the ASIN, the SKU. It's gonna show all of that information. And then it's gonna show the MOQ, the minimum transfer quantity as well, and profits. So it's gonna have your cost of goods, your estimated shipping cost, your retail price, what your gross revenue would be. Now this does not include Amazon fees. We will be getting into more complex development with cash flow and profitability later on. But at this time, it does not include the Amazon fees. But it should give you a rough idea of what your profit is and then what your return on investment would be. Gross revenue, profit, and your total investment. So this is a very helpful report if you are experiencing fluctuation in pricing, such as in a wholesale business. It helps you to know whether a, profit, a product is profitable or not to make better decisions. Then we have our projected forecast model. This is extremely helpful for projecting out a year's worth of orders or transfers so that you can easily communicate to your suppliers and your warehouse the type of business you're going to be doing and how much you're going to be ordering from them on what schedule so that they can more easily plan raw materials and do their own planning so that you don't have as many delays as maybe you would if you did not let them know what your ordering was going to look like. So this is the 
forecast model. And the forecast model has your ASIN and SKU, your marketplace, and it has all of the sales expected for each week. And then in the next tab, it has your forecasted orders. So you can scroll over and see that there's an order here for that SKU. There's an order here again for that SKU. There's an order here. And it'll list out all of your projected orders, right? And you can filter by supplier so that you can send these reports per supplier and not for every single product in your catalog. And of course, there's forecasted transfers. And again, you can filter this by warehouse so that the warehouse understands how often you will be transferring and how much. And this is uh, potentially something that you can send them when you're trying to get an idea of costing. Right, you can do an estimate of your monthly transfers, for example, and see what that would potentially cost you. So that would be a good use of this particular section of the report. All right, then I want to move on quickly to the timeline. The timeline is down here, and you can watch a video on our inventory timeline, but you can actually export this timeline. Once you export that timeline, let's open it up. And you're going to see that it lists the entire timeline out. But the other thing that's very helpful is it'll actually give you what your warehouse buffer stock is at any given time based on your settings. So if you're using it in days, that's going to fluctuate. Your buffer stock for your warehouse, your max stock if you have one set, your buffer minimum and your, buffer and your maximum for FBA, and your threshold. So this might help you if you're having a hard time understanding why the system is telling you to do what it's telling you to do. You can always export this and look and see what the actual numbers are doing. So you can see potentially if you have a conflict with say your buffer stock and the inventory that you're trying to send in to Amazon. So if you are trying to send in, say for example, more than you're allowed to in your threshold, that might be a reason why you're seeing a lot of transfers. So the timeline export helps you to kind of do the math or wrap your head around exactly what is happening and why. Then I want to jump into the order tracker and go under purchase orders. Now purchase orders can be exported and you can again export these by filtering. So you can filter, for example, if you wanted to look at all of your drafts for a particular supplier, you could filter by supplier, you could filter by PO number, right? Your, by your um, order number and then export. And that export is going to pull up a purchase order. So this is gonna be all of your purchase orders for your business, right? And again, you can filter these and you can see what the status is, you can see uh, what products they are, how many were ordered, what PO they're attached to, and that sort of thing. You can also do that for your work orders. I'm not gonna pull up a report, but you can also do that for your work orders. You can do it for your FBA shipments here, exporting whatever view you are currently filtered for. And you can also do it for your customer orders if that's needed. And lastly, I'm not going to get too far into this, but you have your bulk import export. That's under your settings in bulk import export. And you can download your active product, you can export all of your data, and you can upload it as well. You can check out this video for more on that. But that is the general basis of the reporting system. And it becomes very helpful for getting information to your suppliers, to your marketing team, to your warehouse, and anyone else who might need the information inside of SoStock. All right, I hope this was helpful.